Hey everyone, I welcome you all to yet another episode from K21 Academy. In this video, we will look at Azure Active Directory. Before we move further, let's take a look to agenda for this video. We will begin this session by understanding what is Azure Active Directory, then Azure AD concepts, Azure AD benefits, AD joints, then multi-factor authentication, and finally, self-service password reset. In the end, I will also share details about our free masterclass, which will not only help you to learn basics, but it will also give you an idea of the learning part to follow. It would be helpful, especially when you're preparing for Azure Solution Architect certification. Now let's hear from our expert on the same. All right, uh, so let's start with uh, what is Azure Active Directory. So Azure Active Directory, uh, also known as a uh, AAD or Azure AD is Microsoft's multi-tenant cloud-based directory and identity management service. Uh, so different people have different use cases for uh, Azure Active Directory. For example, for IT admins, Azure AD provides an affordable, easy to use solutions to give employees and business partners uh, single sign-on access to thousands of cloud applications like uh, Office 365, Salesforce, uh, Dropbox, Conquer, etc. Okay, if you think about application developers, Azure AD lets you focus on building your application by making it fast and simple to integrate with a world-class identity management solution used by millions of organizations around the world. So some of the capabilities of Azure AD is uh, self-service password and group management. Uh, you have a privileged account manager account management, uh, role-based access control, application use monitoring, security monitoring, alerting, MFA, device registration, and a lot more. So we're going to see uh, what these are, uh, and uh, we'll cover those. So some of the basic AD uh, concepts are identity. So identity is an object that can be authenticated. Account, an identity that has data associated with it. Azure AD account, so it's an identity created through Azure AD or another Microsoft cloud service. Azure tenant, that's a dedicated trusted instance of Azure AD that is automatically created when your organization signs up for a Microsoft cloud service subscription. So basically there's something like uh, your username at, you, you might see uh, some domain name dot on Microsoft.com, that is your Azure tenant. Azure AD directory, so each uh, Azure tenant has a dedicated and trusted Azure AD directory. So tenant is somewhat equivalent to directory. Uh, that, that's a kind of a, they share the similar explanation. User subscription, so subscription is just for, uh, you know, posting your services. And it, it is, uh, it, it's, it's act as a container for uh, storing your usage and uh, resources. So your billing is emitted from the subscription level. All right, so to talk about some of the benefits and features of Azure AD, uh, single sign-on to any cloud or on-premise web application. Uh, Azure AD provides a secure SSO to cloud and uh, on-premise applications, including Office 365 and, uh, serve and another SaaS applications like Workday, DocuSign, ServiceNow, Dropbox, Salesforce, etc. Then uh, works with iOS, Mac OS, OS X, and uh, Android, as well as Windows devices. So users can launch applications from a personalized web-based access panel, or a mobile app, or Office 65, or custom company portals using their existing work credentials. Uh, you can use Azure Active Directory to protect your on-premise web applications with secure remote access. So access your on-premise uh, web applications from everywhere and product with MFA, uh, conditional access policies, uh, group-based access management. The users can access SaaS and on-premise web applications from the same portal. Then easily extend Active Directory to the cloud. So we have something called uh, AD Connect using which you can bring in your on-premise users to the cloud. Uh, protect sensitive data and applications. So enhance application access security with uh, unique identity protection capabilities. 
uh, that provide a consolidated view into the suspicious sign-in activities and the potential potential vulnerabilities. So you can take advantage of advanced security reports, notifications, uh, recommendations, and risk-based policies to protect your business from current as well as future threats. Uh, reduce cost and enhance security with self-service capabilities. So you can delegate important tasks such as uh, resetting password and creation and management of groups to your employees. So providing self-service application access and password management through verification steps can reduce help desk calls and enhance security. Right, uh, so we're gonna see what is Azure AD join. So Act, Azure Active Directory enables single sign-on to devices, apps, services from anywhere. Um, you can also bring your own device and this empowers end users to be productive uh, wherever and whenever. But IT administrators uh, must ensure corporate assets are protected and that device meets the compliance standards of your organization. So Azure AD Join is designed to provide organizational apps and resources and to simply, uh, you know, and to simply Windows deployments of your work on devices. AD Join has uh, uh, these benefits uh, like uh, SSO, your, um, your Azure Managed SaaS and uh, uh, services can use the SSO feature. That's like single sign-on. Uh, your users will not have additional authentication prompts uh, when accessing work resources. Uh, the SSO functionality is available even when the users are not connected to the domain network. Secondly, enterprise uh, compliant roaming. So this enables uh, users setting across joint devices. The users need no need to connect to a Microsoft account to observe settings across devices. Then access to business uh, store for a Microsoft store for business. Uh, you can choose from an inventory of applications pre-selected by the organization. Then support for Windows Hello, which is uh, another authentication method that you have in your uh, Hello enabled laptop, like PIN, uh, facial recognition, etc. Then restriction of access to applications from only devices, that means the compliance policy. So that's uh, conditional access again. Then finally, seamless access to on-premise resources. So when a device has a line of sight to on-premise uh, domain controller, so it can have a seamless view to, it can have uh, access to both the cloud applications as well as the on-premise applications. So uh, the connections on, the connection options are uh, registering and joining. Uh, registering a device to Azure AD enables you to manage a device identity. So when a device is registered, Azure AD device protection provides the device with an identity that is used to authenticate the device when a user sign into Azure AD. Joining a device is an extension to registering a device. This means that it provides you with all the benefits of registering a device. In addition to this, also changes the local state of the device. So changing the local state enables users to sign in to a device using organizational work or school account instead of their uh, uh, personal accounts. So registration is uh, combined with the mobile device management solution such as uh, Microsoft Intune for example, which provides additional uh, device attributes uh, in Azure AD. So multi-factor authentication. Multi-factor authentication is a process where a user is prompt, uh, for, uh, prompted during the sign-in process for an additional form of identification, such as enter a code on their cell phone or to provide a fingerprint scan, etc. So if you might have seen my demo, sometimes I log in, I, I've been asked to uh, give the code that I receive on my um, cell phone. So, uh, so that's MFA. So if you only like to use a password to authenticate a user, uh, it leaves an insecure vector for attack. So if the password is weak or has been exposed elsewhere, um, you know, that's gonna cause a lot of issues. So when you require a second form of authentication, uh, security is increased at an additional factor. So um, when you need that additional level of authentication, you go with MFA. 
So Azure MFA works by requiring two or more um, authentication method. Something you know, that's uh, typically a password. Something you have, such as a trusted device that is not uh, easily duplicated, like a phone or a hardware key. Something you are, like biometrics, like a fingerprint or a face scan. So you can have a combination of uh, any of these two. Uh, so when I log into my organizational account, what I use is I'll use password uh, along with uh, my smart card. So that's a hardware key. And also I, I, uh, when I log into my PC, some, um, log into my, uh, some organizational applications, what happens is I'll use my password. Uh, right after that, it will take me to Windows Hello, where I'll get a face scan and then I'm authenticated. So users can register themselves for uh, self-service password reset and uh, Azure multi-factor authentication in one step uh, to simplify the onboarding experience. So administrators can define what forms of secondary authentication can be used. Azure multi-factor authentication can also be required when users perform a self-service password reset to further secure that process. Otherwise, if someone clicks on self-password reset, uh, it shouldn't go for a reset, right? So MFA will come into picture there as well. It will send a call to your phone. Once you give that code, then only you'll be able to reset the password. So that's like another uh, additional level of security. So when we will talk about users and groups, we're gonna have a, a short demo on uh, how to add MFA or how to set up MFA for a particular user, how to do the self-service password reset, etc. So what are the available verification methods? So when a user sign, signs to an application or service, an MFA prompt is received. So they can choose from one of the registered forms for additional verification. Administration, uh, an administrator could require uh, registration of these uh, MFA verification methods or the user can access their own profile to add or edit the verification method. So what I have done in my one of my profile is I have given my uh, text the code uh, to my phone and to my another personal account. So what I have done is that's again Office 365. What I have done is I'm, I'm using the Authenticator app, which is very easy. I just have to uh, click on approve on my phone and it's gonna take the face ID of my iPhone and that's gonna work. So, so you have different options available. So the following are some of the additional forms of verification that can be uh, used with MFA. One is the Authenticator app. You have an app, you just have to add your account to that. You will get a QR code that needs to be scanned. Once you scan that, your account will be added there. And every time, uh, whenever there's a sign-in request, uh, that will actually uh, send a notification to your uh, phone. Then uh, there is a hardware token. You can have a smart card or a key, something like that. Then you can have SMS. That's what I'm using right now. Then authentication methods are a call to phone, text message to phone, uh, notification through mobile app, verification code from mobile app. So these are the methods that are available right now. So call to phone is places an automated voice call. Uh, the user answers the call and presses hash or the pound sign in the phone keypad to authenticate. So the phone number is not synchronized to on-premise Azure Active Directory on-premise Active Directory, not Azure Active Directory. A voice call to phone is important because it persists uh, through the phone uh, handset upgrade, allowing the user to register the mobile app on the new device. So your, if, if your number is not changing, even if you change your um, device, uh, you'd be still able to complete the authentication. Next one is uh, text message to phone that will send a text message to your phone that contains a verification code. Uh, the user will be prompted to enter the verification code. Uh, this process is called one-way SMS. Uh, Two-way SMS means that the user must uh, text back a particular code. Uh, so two-way SMS is deprecated and not supported after, if I'm not wrong, November 2018. That's, that's what my understanding is, but I could be wrong, but I'll confirm that. Users who are configured for uh, two-way SMS uh, are automatically switch to call to phone verification when this was deprecated. So earlier when I was using uh, MFA in 2018, I had uh, this uh, two-way SMS. So 
I was automatically moved to call. I got a notification from Microsoft that uh, they are going to stop the two SMS. So then notification through mobile app. So this will send a push notification. This is most reliable one and I, I love this one because it's very easy. You don't have to, you know, memorize the number. You don't have to pick up, pick the phone. All you need is your phone needs to be connected to the internet. So one time what happened was uh, uh, I was traveling. I had to authenticate my account. And for some reason, um, it was international roaming. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't register my SIM card with that country's network. So I had no way to authenticate myself and I had to complete something. And uh, luckily, um, there was Wi-Fi available. I, was, uh, I had a secondary option where I could use my authenticator app. So what I did was I selected my app from my profile. And after that, I just connected to the Wi-Fi. I was able to get the notification and complete the MFA. So, but the um, the downside of this is like if you are changing a device, uh, you need to install the Authenticator app on that as well. You need to install the app again, configure your accounts. If it's a phone, uh, no matter which device you're using, the number will retain. Uh, that's that's the ups and downs related to this. The app is available for Windows, Android, and iOS phones. Uh, this is the best user experience uh, that I have seen so far. Then verification code from mobile phone. So the app generates a new code every 30 seconds. It's like you have a timer near your account. You will see a code whenever you open the Authenticator app. So you need to see. Uh, you need to check the code from your phone, and you can just enter that code to the portal, and it will complete the authentication. Uh, the good part about this is, uh, let's say you have no data connection, you have. Uh, uh, no cellular signal still you'll be able to see the uh, number coming up because it's automatically using an algorithm to generate the number it doesn't require data connectivity or uh, cellular signal to do that so that's the best part about the verification code from the mobile app so the next thing uh, is uh, self-service password reset so the large majority of help desk call if you have worked on help desk I, I did a long back so most of the companies are request to reset password for your users. So enabling self-service password reset, also known as SSPR, uh, gives the users ability to bypass the help desk and reset their own passwords. To configure self-service password reset, uh, you must first determine uh, who will be enabled to use the self-service password reset. From your existing Azure AD tenant on the Azure portal, uh, you can select uh, the properties of uh, password reset. Uh, you can you can have a self-service password reset enabled for none selected, like you can have for certain group, or you can have it enabled for all. So this is completely uh, you know uh, depending upon how you manage your uh, users, how what kind of permission they need. Sometimes you don't need the people to uh, reset their password at all. So in that kind of scenario, you can go for selected and have just the groups that need to have the reset or self-service reset. Then uh, the authentication methods that are available for SSPR. Uh, so after enabling the password reset for users and groups, uh, you pick the number of authentication methods required to reset a password. And uh, at least one authentication method is required to reset a password, but it's good to have uh, additional methods available. You know, you can choose from email notification, a text or a card sent to your sent to the user's mobile device or office phone or a set of security questions you have the flexibility to choose that so regarding the security question uh, these can be configured to a certain number of questions to be registered for the users in your Azure AD tenant in addition to that you must cons configure the number of correctly answered question that are required for a successful password reset. Uh, there are a large number of security questions. Uh, not that the security questions can be less secure than other methods because people might know the answers for another question. Like mm, whenever I, I ask, uh, someone asked me for a security question, my, my favorite one would be what was the name of your first pet. So I always choose that. It is quite easy for me. So if someone knows about you, if if someone asks you knows about knows your pet name, they can simply bypass this and they can complete the password reset. So uh, be careful with that.
That was a clip on Azure Active Directory. Now we have put down everything about the certification including basic concept that one should know everything like design authentication and authorization solutions, design a governance solution, design a compute solution, design a non-relational data storage solution, all the way design a data storage solution for relational data, design a solution to log and monitor Azure resources, design a network infrastructure solutions, design a business continuity solutions, design a migrate solution along with tips and resources to clearing the certification exam. We have dedicated team working for CB preparation and most important on job support. If you are interested, I would like to invite you for 45 to 90 minute free class with our certified expert trainer, which will not only help you to learn basics, but it will also give you an idea of the learning part to follow. This interactive session will help you to gaining an understanding of why and who should learn Azure Cloud, Azure Certification Roadmap for Architects, your paths to earning the Azure Solution Architect Expert Certification, difference between AZ 303, 304 and 305, demo on deploying Azure Container Instance and more other topics. You can register for this free class by visiting k 20 academycom slash AZ30502. Let me show you a quick demonstration how you can do the same. Go to any browser and type k 20 academycom slash AZ30502. 30502 and hit enter after landing on free class page just click on register now fill out your details like your name your email address your mobile number after that click on register now it will redirect you to thank you page where you will get all the necessary information about this free class like what we are going to cover in this free class and the webinar link. So guys, at last, if you found this video helpful, please give a thumbs up. If you have any doubts or queries, you can put them down in comment section. Our team will get back to you. Till then, take care.